Are you sitting comfortably? Then I'll begin. fans welcome to another amber and black things are coming on as fast and furious another game here tonight at the Abbey. we're playing wigan uh, a team that really hasn't got themselves together like us to some degree but they have invested money certainly more than we have so the opportunity for them there is to break their duck tonight and obviously it's in our interest to stop them from doing so so if we can carry on the performance that we did last time here at home against cardiff then anything can happen from our point of view but if it looks a bit brighter it's because it is. We've got new, new lamps all in the floodlights. And I've been told that it exceeds the requirements that Sky would need to be able to broadcast without putting extra lights in the place. So that's good news. OK, so we've now spent the two million quid on the floodlights. Let's get on with the programme. Here we go with this week's Amber and Black. <laughs> right, mate, if you just have a zoom in, if you, if you do this, now, is there any resemblance whatsoever? Is there? <laughs> right. In fact, it looks like you've got more hair today, Will. <laughs> I'm Alan Bailey. No, I'm <laughs> right, now, we had a chat with you, Graham, the other week while Brian was sunning it up abroad. Yeah. But how have things developed since since uh, we talked last time, a few oh, weeks back? It's going great. The, the, the publishers are delighted. The book is selling it very well. It's sold out in the shop almost immediately. We've got it back in the shop now. So everything is going really well. And we've started on the new book. 
Has he done a bit since he's been back then? Or? Oh, not <laughs> half, not half. We spent the entire morning sorting out uh, the, the remainders of this book, the, the photographs that we've got. We've got 230 photographs we've got to get back to all the people who lent them to us. And it was, we were just saying this morning, we never could have done this book without the great fans here who've lent us and the, and the players from the past, you know, the players who've lent us a, a, a huge amount. To them. We promise they will have it back very right, shortly. <laughs> so they're in the shops all in Cambridge at the moment, then, right? Yeah? Yes, it, it, it's in the the, the bookshops in Cambridge, but of course it's also available in the club shop. And if the fans uh, want to get it from the club shop, we make a little bit extra money but from them buying it shop than, than, than buying in the town. But they can get it anywhere in, in any bookshop in the town. Any good bookshop, we should say. Have you, have you had a flip through it yourself? Well, have you had a flip through it? I haven't had a flip through it. <laughs> Do you remember the pizza? Do you remember, Do you remember yeah. what, what was the story behind this one? What was the deal there? Well, it's a hard hitter of a ball, as you can see. Barley jumped out of the way. It finished up in the allotment, so don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing changes. <laughs> Nothing changes, man. Nice to see you at the Thanks, meeting. Like, all right. Thank you. Good yeah. luck with the butt, boys. Excellent <laughs> stuff. All right, terrific. <laughs> Cheers. Right, so what team are you all, boys? <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, so, right, Sam, you're the top goal scorer, aren't you? No, that's Sam, right, Sam. Right, then. right then, Sam. So, you've won the, you've won the, you're all here today because you got the... The League Cup. The League Cup. World Cup. Oh, no. right. No. The Fair Play Award. The Fair Play Award. And what does that mean, that you didn't sort of get so many bookings and fouls? We didn't and... get any bookings or anything. You didn't get none at all? No, no. None at all, right. And then you was at the CFU tournament the other week, and what happened there? <laughs> you won, under 14. Now, who's a Cambridge United fan? Me! Right, favourite players? Um, Lionel Perez, yeah. Lionel Perez? Don't know. Yeah. You don't know, you're not a Cambridge United fan. Who is? Dave Kitson. Dave Kitson. I ain't got one. <laughs> Cambridge United players? Yeah, Lionel. 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 You spoiled the apartment one. Alright, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, big up for a then. After three, one, two, three. <laughs> Right, well, boys, get in there. Okay, then. Well, we're here just before the game kicks off. Wigan against Cambridge. So, well, what's your name? Mark. Mark from Wigan. Gillian. And Gillian. What's your name? Robert. Robert. There's Robert. What's your name? Andy. And you look trouble. I bet you're called Trouble, Andy. Isn't yeah. You? yeah. I bet you are. Okay, so what? Well, things ain't really been going too brilliant for you, have you? Like, like us, really? A bit sort of late starting, really? Yeah, well, we got this new manager. He's bought a few players, but... They just haven't seemed to got it together. I'm it, sure. it was because yeah, because I mean things were a bit strange because you, you seemed to be doing all right manager-wise last year and then it just went, it just disappeared, didn't it? Yeah. Then um, Steve Bruce come, but we knew he wouldn't stay long. So well, he wants bigger things. Job, yeah, yeah, but you know, every year we seem to get to the playoffs, but when it comes to the crunch matches, we can't produce it. So, but. I don't have know, you, have you managed to invest some money this this season to, to boost to the side or what? Yeah, well, just before the last season, he bought a couple of players from um, Scotland. Spent one and a half million. He's bought um, he's bought a goalkeeper there, Celtic. He was the number one choice until uh, Martin O'Neill come. He's bought him down. Um, you know, he got Norwich. He was on loan last season. He's not produced much. Um, the good thing for us was, was Jazui stayed, there's a lot of big clubs after him. Um, our goalkeeper left, Roy Carroll for Man United. You know, it's just, I, I think the chairman, he's got lots of money to spend, but he, he seems to waste it a bit. But I'm sure, you know, it will happen, and I'm sure we get in the first division, they'll settle for that for a bit, and things will look up. But we got a lovely stadium and everything. Lovely stadium, spot on, isn't it? I mean, the stadium. Is that, are you getting sir? the fans? Or have no. you been affected by the fans? <laughs> well, well, since we moved to Spring Springfield Park, the average has gone up about two, three thousand. But I, d I don't know. There's there's lots of clubs in the northwest. You know, you got your right, Boltons, yeah. Blackburn, Oldham. Yeah. And we're all, you know, the. I'm sure if, I'm sure if, uh, I'm sure if Wigan get together, the fans are there. Cause, you know, there's 20,000 who watch the rugby every week. That's right. And yeah. we can poke some of them. So it's all there. It can happen. But it's just they've got to get it together and yeah. win these, you know, win. At, at least win our own games and do something when we come away from home, which we haven't been doing. Who should we be looking out for tonight? Um, definitely Lee McCulloch if he's playing. If Andy Liddell's fit, he's one to watch out for. Hayworth looks like a big slow donkey, but he's a big lad and he'll get on the end of a cross if they chuck it in. Um, 
you know, they've all got they've all got it on the day. It's just the producing it, yeah. I'm sure like you're like, well, you know, you're the you're the same. We've got some talent, it's yeah. just putting it together as a team on the yeah. day, isn't it? Yeah. So what we'll score, any idea of a score? As long as we can um I'd like to see what we can do, they score and then stick 13 men behind the ball, they'll get ball boys on and everything, they'll grab me on to sit, sit in defence, but um, the longer it goes, a 1-0 will do for me to Wigan, and hopefully Wigan will score it in the 90th minute, but um, yeah, they seem to let goals in Wigan when they... A silly part, like they played. Well, we did that at Blackpool, did that yeah. when we played them Saturday, the yeah. last, last few minutes of the game. That's we right. scored an equaliser. Yeah, but it was um, QPR on Saturday. They scored on the 45th minute, and uh, Brennan let an own goal in on the 90th minute, and they lost 2 1 when they should have won the game. You know, it's. They just lack concentration, lacks. But you get that in this well, division. That's, that's, that's why they're that's not playing the Premiership, what, mate. You know it. what I mean? So. Well, yeah. I'm expecting a few more because it's a bit, uh, it's a bit scant for Wigan. I mean, we're expecting yeah. a few more. I know it's a Tuesday night, but yeah, it's a long way. I think sometimes we put two coaches on, but there's only probably one. We've come in car. I don't know. It's, I think it's Tuesday. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Depends what Wigan Rugby are doing as well, that's whether right. they're at home and yeah. Okay, this will do. Well, well, that's me, yeah. yeah and, thank uh, thanks you, for the commitment coming down here. Yeah. True supporter. Yeah. All right, yeah, and man. have a good game. Best yeah. team win. All right, mate. Yeah, cheers, See you later. Say to you, What do you reckon the score's going to be? Um, 5 0 for, for Wigan. You're joking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, in about five minutes' time, we've got the first Andrew McCulloch challenge of this new season with a brand new sparkling machine. George. Impressive, impressive design and impressive piece of workmanship. Must have cost a lot to produce. Wonderful. Yeah, George, what system are you using this week, this year for the Andrew McCulloch Challenge? Well, we've invited all the other 12 coach leagues. We've invited 18 teams. With uh, we've kept the final home game of the season uh, in case there's a playoff needed, and if not, we'll think of a final program or the winners will come on and do an exhibition. Right, and who's kicking off tonight? The kicking off tonight is Chesterton Eagles. Right, so under 12s. Chesterton Eagles under 12, they kick off. Thanks again to Andrew McCulloch for sponsoring this event again this year and to George from Top Level Solution for his support of the club in general and PR in particular. George, get the kids out on the pitch. Thanks very much, See you later. What's your team all together? Chester and Eagles! Right then, Chester and Eagles. Now listen, last year you came second in this competition, didn't you? Yes. Right? Or you, the other lads that did it for you, Chester and Eagles team come second. But the winners last year got 18 balls in 4 minutes and 6 seconds. You've just got 18 balls in 3 minutes 46 seconds. So in fact, you beat the winners of last year, so that means you're in with a good chance of winning this year. What do you reckon? Are you going to do it? Yes! What's your name? Nathan. Liam. Lee. Robert. Tom. Are you all United fans? Yes! For definite? You're not just on a free ticket here tonight, are you? No! Right then, so up the U's after three. One, two, three! Up the U's! A new feature here, a new feature. Whose mum is this, right? This is the question. Right, I'm new questions, right. Uh, what colour hair did your hat son have when he was born? Red. Red hair when he was born? When he was right. born. Right, okay. <laughs> is he tall or is he small? He's a lot taller than I am. Right then. <laughs> Whose mum is this? We'll be back very soon. From <laughs> Black for Use, News, Fuse and Refuse. back. Okay fans, who we have here, we've got a rare privilege, we've actually found, who is it? Whose mum is it? 
David Kitson. David Kitson's mob. And you've come all the way, but you live in Letchworth all over that way, don't you, Corinne? Yes. Now, what's it been like for you as a, as a footballer's mom to be a footballer's mom? I mean, how long have you been played that role as a footballer's mom? How long have I been a footballer's yeah. mom? Oh, 21 years. 21 years. So yeah. you was there when he was Colts and yeah. getting all his yeah. shoes? Yeah. Absolutely. He took a ball to bed with him, even as a baby. So he's been playing football all his life. So what's it like now you've actually experienced him hitting what would be termed the big time and actually playing for a, a, a league club? Brilliant. I'm so pleased for him. I'm proud and I'm pleased for him. This is what he's wanted, so good on him. Right, is he keeping his feet on the ground? Absolutely, I think so. Yeah, I really do. He's, and is, uh, is he keeping the money or is he saving it or is he spending it? Um, or in the, too not much that around comes them? my way. <laughs> is he, have you increased the rent? <laughs> Oh yeah, and in fact his room's up for let. Is that right? <laughs> okay. Well, it's a great pleasure meeting you, Corinne. All right, and we'll it's get this out to you. We'll send you that very soon. Excellent. And there you go. Do you not think that that Corinne looks like Kitson's mum? Who else could she be? Lovely. Well, Pleased thanks. to meet you, Corinne. You All right. Much. Get out of my way. <laughs> Who scored the goal, Pro? <laughs> 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 
he reckoned he slipped it in. Right then, end of the game, John. Um, where do we start? I mean, another one we should have won. Another one we should have won. Well, I mean, we we, were, uh, we had a bit of good fortune um, uh, against Blackpool and uh, we got more than we deserved and uh, again we're back to the old thing again you know we didn't get what we deserved tonight and uh, I think the players showed, showed some you know real grit and mm -hmm. uh, didn't play well first half uh, but we was a lot more attacking minded second half and uh, hit the post, missed the penalty, uh, had some other chances cleared off the line and uh, it wasn't to be tonight and uh, all we can say is that lads that you know gave it everything they've got and uh, I hope the fans appreciate that because uh, you know, they, these are a young set of lads that are inexperienced and uh, I was pleased with some of the football we played, uh, but we didn't convert our chances. Def definitely looking at the games, they were progressing, John. I mean, the, the, the spectacle is getting better. I mean, there's no question about that. We're, we're playing together as a team better. Good. And I'm seeing that it is sort of different players each week. It's quite good to be able to go out there and keep playing football. That's right. So that's nice. Yeah. Now, Kits, last season, I remember at the end of the season, at Swansea, mm -hmm. I mean, I remember you saying to me there, Kits is the penalty taker. Now, is there any reason why Kits isn't the penalty taker well, today? It, it, no, yeah. I, I mean, mean, he's a centre forward, John. Is there well, any reason? Well, I mean, we've uh, we, we've got um, our skipper out, out at the well, moment. Well, Paul's Paul normally, Paul he's normally definitely a yeah. penalty man, isn't he? Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it's, um, it's really down to the lads. And on the night, it's who fancies it, you right. know, and uh, Terry was the only one that fancied it and he showed some real bottle and he stepped up, OK, he didn't score. Um, you, you, you'd bet on him nine times out of ten as well, wouldn't well, you? Well, that's right. I mean, you know, we've had two penalties now and mm. we, we, we've missed both of them and, uh, you know, had we scored both of them, we would have got a, a point against uh, Notts County and we would have got three points uh, tonight. But, uh, you know, I, I'm pleased that we're, we're creating chances and we're playing good football. And uh, I'm, I'm pleased with the attitude of the players, and they're giving it everything they've got. A couple of things. I mean, I'm, I'm getting stopped by fans now, which is nice because obviously it's feedback from the program, really. But they're, they're asking me to ask you questions. So if there's a couple yes. of just couple of things, um, the defenders tonight. What's been pointed out to me is that we had uh, we had five de five not defenders. Sorry, the subs right on the bench. Five subs. Four of them. Uh, well, sorry, three of them were defenders. Yeah. Is there any reason for that, John? Well, no, the reason is because we're down to the bare bones. Right. You, know, you know, Tony Scully's not fit, yeah. Colin Allside's not fit. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're really looking to try and get another uh, seasoned, uh, well-established striker in the club for the right money, you know. Right. Uh, and uh, at the moment, if you, if you look at actually what we've got, uh, the subs and the team that played, that's all we have got at the right. moment, that, right. uh, you know, that are fit and ready to go. So uh, what we've got to do is just get, get on with it, you know, yeah. be professionals and accept the situation and deal, uh, with, it is, yeah. deal, deal with it and, and uh, be professionals and accept what comes. Right, another thing that uh, someone's asked, I mean, he's all technical still, you know me, John, I don't know all this crack, right, so I'll do my best, right? The other thing is, well, when, we, when there's a corner taken against us, mm -hmm. all 11 of our men are behind the ball. Why don't we leave a man ready to, for the break, which, which most teams, yeah. are, it's been pointed out to me, most teams do. Yeah. Why don't we leave a man up ready for the break? Is there any yeah. reason for that? Well, I mean, we, we feel that at this moment that's the, the best way to organise it. Um, we've conceded one goal so far from a corner and uh, uh, we're, we're going to stick with that organisation. I can understand perhaps the, the supporters' frustration that we don't leave one or two players up. Uh, we will do when we get uh, a little bit better and a bit more confident Right. In, in, in the players that we've got uh, so that they know their organisation and we feel that they can defend their areas well enough. Um, you know, we're asking Dave Kitson to go up there and score the goals for us and the next minute he's standing in the centre of uh, our defence having to head it away. We would really like to leave him up but, uh, you know, we're a little bit short on numbers mm. uh, and size in the box. You know, that's why we miss Colin Allside because, you know, yeah, yeah. Colin Allside is, is such a threat mm. in the box. That's why we miss Paul Wanless, because mm. Paul Wan mm. Wanless is such a threat in the box. And, and when we get an established squad together, and an established 11 is running out, we and we feel... We can make a different shape. Yeah, yeah we, can, we, can, uh, we can change that. But, you know, we're in this situation at the moment. We've, we've got injuries, and uh, uh, we've got to go with that organisation and try not to concede and, uh, and get on with it. Mm. So he's really not looking at what what, what could be, it's, it's what we've got, isn't it? That's it's really what we've got at the moment and we've got to get on with it. Well, that's yeah, right. that's right. Yeah. Alright, John, so do you think what we've done tonight is good preparation for Saturday? I mean, that's probably a bigger game than what we had tonight, isn't it? Would you say that what we did here tonight is, is a good well, setup for Saturday? Second half, you right. know, second half we played better, didn't yeah, we? Yeah. we? We played, I thought we played better yeah. second half and uh, we brought... Um, 
Armand Wanoff yeah. uh, is a young oh, Armand on age. On, 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 on. Okay, so <laughs> we call him we call him number one. Number one. <laughs> right. He and, will uh, become the boy, no question. No he question. will be. He's going to be a fantastic yeah. player. The boy is. Uh, he's, no, he's, you know, he's no only. Question. 18 years of yeah. age and uh, he won't be 19 till March and uh, we're looking for him to be a super player. Um, he's, he hasn't had much training right. so the, the pace of the game at times is a bit too much yeah. for him. Uh, what we're going to do is feed him in at the right time and give him a half at the right time and sit him on the bench at the right time and uh, then feed Alex Ravel in at the right time, mm -hmm. another 19-year-old. So, uh, you know, we, we feel we're doing it right by the boy and uh, I think, you know, this time next season uh, he's going to be a hell of a player for us. Right. Well, there's a lot, there is a lot to look forward to. I mean, and really, getting draws like this at this end and with the squad that we've got, I mean, we keep referring to it, but it's a fact. So. Yeah. It isn't negative, it isn't sad, it isn't no. depressing. No. And I think, well, you know, we're ticking along nicely at the moment. You know, we've picked up from where we started off anyway. Yeah, I mean, uh, we're starting to pick up points, right. you know, and that's the most important thing. We've got, we've got to sort of grind out results at the moment. And, and then when we get, you know, Tony Scully back right. and Colin Allside back. And How long have you got Paul left Tony, do you reckon? You're... Well, Tony's going, has been uh, to Lillyshaw for a week. Right. We're hoping he comes back from Lillyshaw, ready to sort of start almost full-time training, right. and uh, maybe then another couple of weeks he might be ready. That's right. And uh, he is a very pacey, fast winger, and he'll, he'll give us a, a lot of options well, down that, yeah, down that right hand That's side. Right. And uh, obviously we miss Colin. That's right. Uh, Phil, it, Phil filled in. He did come back. I mean, I know he was, must have been tired for him. No, I'm very he, pleased with Phil. It's yeah. nice to see him back. But he hasn't even played a reserve no, game, no, Phil, and he's, in. and he's straight in there. And I thought you had a. Mm. had a good game. What about Warren? Is he, is he still finding his way? Did yeah, he's, he's, he finding his yeah. Feet. he's finding his feet. He's, he's, uh, he's been playing at Gene Vauxhall level right. and um, he's, he's finding it a little bit hard to adjust to the pace right. at the moment. But he'll get there. Yeah. He's uh, a quality player. A quality right. player. Well, we rely on you and you're the manager. We know what we're talking about. No, right, John, excellent night. Well, and uh, overall, it's good, it's good night's entertainment. Well, I thought, I for, mean, for, it, the, for the fans coming you know, I mean, football. certainly anyone that didn't support Wigan or didn't support Cambridge, if himself. it was like an impartial game, yeah. To watch, mm. it must have been exciting. There was plenty of goals, plenty of goal mouth incidences, right. some good football, and uh, a great effort, you know, from both sides. And I, I'm pleased that you know that we played a lot better second half after our talk in the, in the dressing room. Well, certainly have to watch scene tonight. Looking forward to Saturday. All right, well, John. We'll keep it going if we can. Excellent stuff. All right, John. Cheers. See you Saturday. Cheers. Stay tuned now. Don't go away. Two sugars, and don't be long, thanks. Stay tuned to Amber and Black. With another play profile, and it's the latest addition to the squad. Yeah, I think you're the latest, Warren, unless there's something secret going on behind the scenes. You are the latest addition. So it's Warren Goodhind, who joined us a, last, a couple of weeks ago. Welcome to the club, Warren. Thanks okay. Now. You've played a couple of games with so far, but we'll talk about that later. All right, let's talk about exciting stuff, shall we? Let's All talk right. about exciting <laughs> stuff. What, what's your history, Warren? In uh, I mean, what position do you play for the fans who haven't seen you, who haven't had a chance to come and see you play? Uh, predominantly in defence. Um, Any right preferred side? Right. Mainly on the right side. I can swing the left foot when I need to, um, but my best position is going to be on the right. Okay. So. How old are you now, Warren? I'm 24. So what, what's your history, I mean, from, from leaving school, what's, what's your history in football? Uh, finished my A levels, went to Barnet, um, did a second year YTS there, got a pro contract, um, did my first year pro, was a sort of learning ca uh, curve, didn't really, I sort of figured in a team but didn't play many games. Then the following year, new manager come, John Steele, who's yeah. previously, the, um, he's still the Barnet manager now. Um, was fortunate enough to have a good pre-season. Stayed in the team ever since. Uh, I, had a, I had a bad injury, broke my leg uh, in that November. Was a years ago, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, November '98. Um, sort of put me on hold for a couple of years while I got over that. Um, I needed a metal rod and the rest of it removed. And then obviously I've just come to Cambridge. I mean, you were at the, at the, just prior to the to the sort of broken leg. You were being touted by sort of. Big clubs, weren't you? I mean, Millwall is one that comes to my mind, and there was a couple of Premier clubs were looking at you. I mean, I believe so. Yeah. I mean, did, did you actually get contacted, or you, that's just all here? Yeah. Saying? I mean, a lot of it come from sort of you know the upstairs at, at right. Barnet, the the, um, the committee members and the rest, of it, all those people upstairs. So it was never a concrete, concrete. Right. 
Uh, they never told me to be fair until, uh, but must have been about three or four months after I broke my leg. So. Well, well, that's nice. To know. That's, I know, yeah. that's nice to know. I think it? it was done as an incentive to <laughs> right, want to get back. Get back. And it sort of killed me a little bit as well. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh god, I can't believe it. Lovely stuff. Yeah. Lovely stuff. Are you single, Warren, or are you married, or? I'm single, but I've been with my girlfriend for seven years. So, so are you? <laughs> I'm not married. You're not married. No, so you're not single, then, are you? You're not single. Uh, yeah. We're in the new millennium now. Yeah. Are you allowed to, to live together? Are you allowed to I might as well be married, but no. Right. Yeah, I've been with my girlfriend. Keep years. your money in your pocket, mate. <laughs> Keep your money in your pocket. Sensible. <laughs> now, so in your career, who, who, what sort of players have, have you admired? Who, either who you've come across or who you've seen on the telly, or I mean, who, what team have you followed first? I mean, have you had a team that you followed yourself? Yeah, Tottenham. Are you a London guy? I am. Well, I live. Um, well, I've always lived just on the outside of, uh, on the outskirts of London, uh, sort of Watford Way. Well, yeah. Um, Tottenham. I used to be an Arsenal fan until I was about four, and then I watched Glenn Hoddle uh, become a Tottenham fan, right. much to the disgust of my dad, who's an Arsenal fan. Right. Um, Glenn Hoddle was the main one going through school, and then obviously you had Gaza. Yeah. Love Gaza, um, and then for me. Uh, although I don't support them, I love watching the Man United team. You know? Yeah. Um, well, it's it's the best football you can find in this country. Yeah, the, I can't. Really. You know, when they're they're on the telly in Europe and that is brilliant. Um, and Eric Cantona was someone who I, yeah. I like to watch a lot as well. It's not really people in my positions, but uh, just the things just that they like could the do. Yeah, yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, unbelievable. So, who would you say is the most difficult player you've actually defended against in your in your time? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I would have to say. As a pair, uh, Robbie Keane and Steve Ball, and that was at Wolves. Uh, we played Wolves um, for Barnet in the uh, Worthington Cup, and uh, absolutely run us ragged. Did they? Beat us 5 0 at Molyneux, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Ball got hat trick. I've never Ball, but you've not had a happy life, really. No, nah, no, nah, and that you was know. my first game as captain for Barnet. Did, did, did you know Man United were after you with your broken leg? <laughs> <I'm> not, <yeah. laughs> Oh, well. <laughs> so it goes. Yeah, yeah that's it. it yeah. So, Kate, how'd you come across? I mean, we played Barnet over the years just before you dropped into the into the. Uh, what are you in? Without being conference disrespectful, now, conference. Now, yeah. so, uh, I mean, I remember going to Barnet over the years, you know, quite often. But had you played against us? And yeah, uh, John Steele's first season, the year I said to you, I really broke in. Uh, one of my first games was a man marking job on Martin Butler. Oh, 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 that was a hard one. Oh, yeah, it was yeah. a hard one. Yeah, we won that one. Yeah. Um, and then two one, if I remember. Was it? Two, I think three, it could have been yeah. or three one. Three, yeah, three one. one. Right. And then the following year, um, I started off at left back in a four against John Taylor, who was playing then. Um, and luckily for me, I reverted to the middle and sweeper, so I didn't have to mark him. Um, and we lost that one three two. Right. So that's your exposure, of Cambridge. I mean, yeah. When did you know about John Beck? Have you have you heard about John Beck at all? Uh, yeah, I, I mean I, I know what I've read, um, and he's a good friend of John still, my right. manager. So um, I've seen him around, met him a couple of times. Yeah, I've, I know of him. So. so did you know what he was coming to as far as the regime? Because John's sort of well sort of respected for his fitness sort of regime, and and which perhaps is a bit more acute than most clubs yep. uh, at this level anyway. I mean, was that something that you was looking forward to, or was it something that you didn't really appreciate? Uh, I don't mind hard work, you know. I, I love, you know, obviously getting the, the balls out like all the rest of the lads and, you know, playing football. But um, I'm not frightened of hard work. John still. What have, uh, what have you it? found different then, Warren, since you've been here Just compared to your, your old routine? It's you like the uh, eating side of it, yeah. um, which, you know, can obviously can make a massive difference. Uh, the training is hard. Um, Fortunately enough, I've been involved with sort of the first team, um, so training's been a lot on uh, position of play yeah. and set up play, which is great for me. Um, we used to do a lot of that um, at my previous club, but you know we haven't done as much um, in recent times, and so it's nice for me to get back to that, get familiar. Um, and, and try and get my sort of alertness back, if you know what right, I mean. Right, right, yeah, because it takes time. I mean, it's a big step. It is a big step, yeah, isn't it? Is, well, yeah. It is a big step to go from the pace, probably, that you're at yeah. in, in, in that league up to where we are in the second division. It is a big step still. Definitely, you yeah. Know, I mean, Especially yeah. from one week playing in where you're playing and the following week, because you're in this that's, state. That's you know? it, yeah. It was just sort of from nowhere. I mean, uh, 
all due respect to the conference, you know, I was surprised when we went down there, like we went down last year, I thought it was going to be even harder than playing in the third division. Um, they play a lot more football in the conference yeah. and the third division is a lot harder, a lot quicker, a lot stronger um, and then to come here it's a little bit quicker as well. So, yeah. so it's uh, just always it's, it's peaking all of the... Yeah, that's peaking. right, but why would you want to play it, you know, it's, this is easy and, and not sort of progress yourself that's and, right. and that's what I want to do, you know. Um, they've given me the chance to do it, so hopefully I can repay them and not drop too many uh, errors. <laughs> well, let's talk about that, <laughs> yeah. shall we? Let's get around to talking about that. Now, look, I mean, put it in perspective. I mean, OK, compared to, to Barnet or to a conference side, it, it could be perceived we're a Division Two club. We should be a lot more massive in, in terms of support and in terms of finances and all that. But I don't know if you've realised since you've been here, but, but we are one of the smaller teams in the division. And on paper, really, you know, we, we're more suited uh, for financially and setup wise perhaps to a, a third division club really so I mean to invest the sort of money that we have done in yourself for me as a supporter to me as a supporter yeah. tells me that the manager has obviously got the management has obviously got great belief and confidence in your abilities all right so because that reflects in the money because we don't spend that sort of money Warren. Yeah. I mean I'm going back um, Martin Butler we spent 150 grand on which was some years ago um, there's one or two others that, that you know that sort of figure that all just below that but it's been a while since we spent a lump like that on one player mm. okay so there is quite a deal of uh, confidence in you right yeah. <laughs> can you yeah, going pressure, yeah. <laughs> right yeah, man. now we started off at Blackpool yeah okay now the week before you play in conference, the following week you're in the heat of it on a sticky pitch in Blackpool and perhaps not fully au fait with the way that we do things, right? Uh, or the way John Beck plays his game, right? Because it is a bit different in some respects to, to most teams play in, in certain styles. So making allowances for that, but the simple uh, mistake, if you like, that you made at Blackpool was just slipping over, which can happen to anybody, yeah. can't it? Yeah. So can we have 10 grand back for that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nice, isn't it? I mean, that's yeah. all it was, wasn't it? it was yeah, just, just, just lost my foot in. Um, the pitch was heavy, but I had studs in, thought they'd be fine. Um, Do you get different uh, length of studs? Yeah, though? to be fair, mine are, they're brand new boots, and they, you know, I've never, I don't think I've ever really had to change studs ever in, in a number of years. Um, obviously, at half time, I had to change them and put the longer studs in. Well, did you find that better then in the second half? Did you make a difference? Yeah, but the, the, damage, fair, had been done, the damage had been done, and that side of the pitch that was coming down the second half wasn't as uh, soft anyway. Right, I think right. it's because they've got the new. That's what it's, yeah, it's all excuses, but they've got the new stand there, so obviously it doesn't it get as much. It, yeah. yeah, it gets uh, it's weathered, so. Um, yeah, so that's all it's just, just stupid, lost my foot in. Right. But, I mean, all the reports back about overall play was people were happy, you know, and you, you had positional sense and, and you were all right. So, right, so yeah. Blackpool, and we managed to come over the point, yeah. which was a good good result based on the overall performance of yeah. the team anyway. So that's fair comment, right? Now, what? Now let's move to your second game. <laughs> now, you have told me, actually, you have told me that your first game for Barnet, you actually gave two goals away yeah. in one goal. Two, two back so passes, things are improving, yeah. aren't they? We're doing I, it over two games. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. It's two debuts rather than one now. <laughs> so what, what, now, the other day, uh, I mean, it, it, it actually happened against the game, uh, who did we play the other day? I forgot now. Wigan. Wigan, right, on Tuesday night. Now, it, it seemed to happen in slow motion. The ball came up to you. And it was a strike position you actually would put yourself in to actually be kneeling or sort of kneeling down to chest it down. Yeah. Um, but you, you've told me before we start that that's something you generally do. Yeah, I've always um, I just always found that I've been able to normally just bounce it into the keeper's hands. Um, from chest, just, just from my chest, and I protect the ball into me um, for whatever reason. I shouldn't have done it in the first place, just, you know, the, the state of the game said that we was under a bit of pressure, should have just cleared it um, with my head. Um, just thought, as normal, just a normal reaction, I just bounced it in, but I just got no uh, power in it at all and it, it just died flat and obviously fell straight to uh, the centre forward. And he did put it away quite nicely. He put it, he put it away too well. <laughs> So uh, and now, yeah. now obviously it's a new relationship with yourself and Lionel. Yeah. Now, now Lionel is quite a um, sort of a, a, a vocal character. Okay, when it, in the heat of battle, 
Um, now, I didn't see him actually say anything to you at, at, at that second. Did, did, did he actually say anything to you? I think he was just being probably kind to me. Or do you not understand French? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was just being kind to me at that moment in time. But uh, to be fair, he came over to me about five minutes later and just, you know, I, me had it gone for a couple of minutes. Well, you know, sure, yeah. I'd let, you know, basically the lads down and that's not the sort of ideal start you want. Um, but he came over and just said, you know, you've got to try and do everything to help us win it now which you try and do from, you know, set pieces, which is obviously uh, the only chance I get mainly to go forward. Um, but, yeah, no, he, he was fine, and uh, I'm sure once he knows me a bit, a little bit more, yeah. I'll probably be, get, be getting the rockets as well, so I don't mind that. It's part of the game. It's part, it's part, of, part of it, yeah, well. of course. But the lads, I mean, obviously the lads, you know, saw it for what it was, just a simple mistake, and... and uh, I hope so, yeah, I think so. That, I mean, you know, as I said, you know, it's hard because I don't know anyone. Um, I'm gradually getting to know the lads that seem like a great, great set of lads, just as I've come from Barnet, great set of lads there as well. Um, and I, I just don't want to, you know, make too, uh, make any more mistakes if I can help it. Um, well, no, it's helped us because we've just put a bid in, as I say, back to Barnet to say we want 20 grand <laughs> knocks off the bill now, so you're all right. <laughs> you're all right. Um, so do you live in London now then, Warren, or are you going to move to Cambridge? Or I'm going to move up this way, yeah, oh, yeah? with my girlfriend. Right, yeah. so that'll be good. So then uh, we it can get you in here more often and we can get these things done. You can, done yeah, hopefully. Yeah. That's excellent, <laughs> all right. So what, what's your... What's your ambitions for your future, just to finish this off? I mean, what's your real, what's your goals in your own sort of personal life? What would you like to achieve out of your football? Uh, I want to play as high as I can. Um, I want to see, I want to see how good a player I could become as well. Um, as I said, at Barnet, I got a little bit stale. Mm. You know, I've been there a long time. People knew. Familiarity breeds contempt. Yeah, content, it, yeah. It, you just sort of get set in your ways, and that, and probably that's why the first few days it was a bit strange being away from there. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I want to see how much I can do, how much I can improve. That's how, how high I can play um, and, and just go from there, really, and not make too many more mistakes. Well, you've used them up this season. You can't <laughs> have any more, Warren. <laughs> I hope I don't. Uh, Excellent stuff, mate. Brilliant. Welcome to the club, Cheers, all right? Much, and yeah. uh, this will go out next week, so uh, we'll charge you a fiver to watch <laughs> that, all right? I'm not sure <laughs> <laughs> All right, mate, that's Warren Goodwood, new guy at the club. Give him a break, all right? What are you like first day at work? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant. Cheers, Cheers Warren. Cheers. What are you doing touching that remote? Leave it alone, stay tuned. Yeah. Don't go channel hopping. Okay then, we've just had another Andrew McCulloch challenge and um, the team we've got here is, what's your team boys? Cambridge Musketeers! Whoa, very loud and confident. Okay, so how many balls did you get in? 18. 18, but what was the time that you got it in? 3.36. So then that beat last week's or Tuesday? Ten seconds. Ten seconds. So you're in the lead. Now, do you know, last year, last year, you won, didn't you? But you, you beat your time that you had last year. Do you realise that? Yes. So are you confident about winning this year? Yes. OK, what's your name? Luigi. Chris. Lewis. Hob. Ben. Ben. And do you United supporters? Yes. yes. What's your favourite player? Kitson. Uh, I haven't really got one. Okay. They're all good. They're all good. That's good. Lionel Perez. Lionel? Perez. Lionel? Perez. Who? Perez. 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 Okay, Beans game. Right then. One more big up for Cambridge Musketeers and let's see how you do for the rest of the season then. Have a good season. We'll see you at the end of it. All right? After three. One, two, three. Musketeers! Woohoo! Right then. Game here today, Saturday, QPR against Cambridge United. Uh, an amazing occasion because it's, it's been a while since we played you, isn't it? It's been a couple of seasons now since QPR Cambridge. How many was it? 18 years. 18 years. Ago, so. 18 years ago. Right, well, things have changed. So, I mean, you're looking to go straight things back. Have changed. Have they not? <laughs> you're going up. We're still trying to go up. You're coming down. <laughs> well, we've got three sides now. <laughs> so, I mean, how, how are things look? Are you looking to bounce straight back or what? I mean, obviously, you'd like to. I think that. Um uh, Holloway's put together uh, a team of players that really aren't prima donnas. Uh, Rangers had a lot of players that really weren't up to the standard, but they had names. And I think they were being picked because of their names rather than the quality on the pitch. But he's brought together a disparate band of players and they seem to be performing pretty well. So, so what sort of have you invested money this season into...? into no, not really. It's been free transfers, about six or seven players. and. Uh, They've just gelled really well together. I mean, if you look at today's game, if the results go right, we could be top of the league tonight. Right. 
Um, it's in liquidation. Or, you know, it, it can't buy players. It's as simple as that. It has to get players from what's, the lower divisions. What's this story about the Moonies and stuff? What's the great <laughs> on that? What's the Active buyers. Is it, I is don't think it's going to happen. Was yeah, it a fact? fact. Yeah. But I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, there's another buyer I think is going to take over, and that should happen within the next counts. Have you noticed that your fan base has been hit by your sort of demotion? No, as it is? There's been more season tickets sold this season than last season. Really? So it shows there is a strong core to the club, and I think that you know as the team are performing now and fighting um, for the cause, then bring some oh, spectators right. are aware of that. I mean, you look at Tuesday night; we had the largest crowd in the second division. We had over 11,000. No one else touched 10. So I think that shows that the level of support is really sort of holding up. And uh, I think if the team continues to do well, then that should keep yeah. winning. Does bring so who should we be looking out for sort of key players? Well, at the moment, Andy Thompson seems to uh, be scoring the goals for us. So, you know, he's probably got 80% of our goals. Yeah, he's scored nine goals in nine appearances, plus one a sub, hasn't he? So, oh, so it's a so pretty good game, game record. Good, game. good players here. Yeah. Have a look, at, look out for the kid called Dudu. Well, that's why we're he's, on the uh, message board on the internet. Full name of Belly Mbombo. Right, right. Doo -doo he's got a lot of skill, and uh, if he turns, should yeah. be entertaining for the crowd, that's right. for sure. And also another French guy that we've signed on a year's love. Oh, I saw that name this morning. Superb yeah. player as well, and uh, he's done well for us. And I think he's probably one of the key reasons, isn't he? He's held the defence. The defence has very been, well. yeah. The, you know, Rangers were always very suspect, but they seem to have. Uh, pulled it together now and they've got a fairly good unit working so you know I'd like to think that the Rangers will come they'll be strong at the back um, and will score a couple up front. So Steve Palmer former Ipswich player right. uh, but on a free transfer he's the captain now and uh, has been a really good influence I think on the pitch and according to Holloway uh, in the dressing room as well so you need um, someone strong like that yeah and I think he's, he's around taken around. that role on board very very well and uh, you know, he's, he's been a major part in helping the team gel together. So, uh, all right. And so, what we're going to do? Predictions, then. Go on. What, what do you reckon the score today? Then? I think two-one Rangers. Two-one Rangers. Two-one, three-one. Two-one, three-one. Uh, two-one. Who-two? Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> all right, lads. Have a good game. Best team win. All right. Thanks for your time. Question today, John. A big question is: Is Steve going to be fined, or are you going to let this one pass? <laughs> well, 
I actually didn't see the incident, to be quite honest, and I don't know why the referee gave it. And I, and I do know that the lads were saying they actually gave a penalty. Well, I thought, yeah, we all thought and, he had, uh, yeah. it was the it was men who said, no, the offence was outside the box. So that was pleasing. Uh, there were a number of times I thought we we them offside and the linesman didn't uh, didn't give it uh, late on when we was at our backs against the wall. And uh, it seemed to me that the referee went over and had a word with the linesman about, you know, if we're squeezing up and the opposition are coming back, that it's not offside. Mm. But... You know, those self-same players that were coming back from an offside position were then the ones that were getting in. Right, right. So, I mean, for me, there were some poor decisions um, uh, by the linesman and by the referee that, that created us a few problems. But certainly for an hour, I felt we were much the better Definitely, side yeah. and uh, it was only when you know, we, we brought Armand off that things deteriorated yeah. and obviously when Stev got taken off, you know, things deteriorated a little bit That's more. Right. But... Uh, you know, we showed some good grit there, and you know, and we defended it in depth, and uh, we got the, got the three points which we, we needed. We soaked it up a lot better. We're still, I mean, we soaked up the pressure where we've, uh, you know, in previous games when we've got sort of team at the end, and we've lost the game or we've drawn it. I know, I know. I mean, we I soaked know. it up a lot better today. Yeah, it was, ple it was pleasing, especially when the five minutes come up. Where did that come from? I don't know. I know, I know. Well, I mean, you, we're always going to get that. You know, you know, the uh, uh, the fourth official is going to put up those extra minutes and you think, my God, where did that's that right, come yeah. from? But uh, you know, that's part and parcel of the game now. We have to accept that. Uh, I, I was very, very pleased with the overall performance, certainly for a, for an hour. You know, we were by far the better side and uh, I feel that we, we were moving on now. Yeah. Is, there, is there any uh, people involved in QPR still, John, that you know? You know no. That, no, no, no. So it's no feather in your cap then, really? No, not, really. No, not at all. Just then. another team these days. Another, another team, team, another team. You know, my first club was, was QPR and uh, I started off as an apprentice there and it's... Uh, Brings back fantastic memories, Definitely. and it's always nice to, you know, to beat your, your old club and that. But uh, no moment that sort of uh, brings Maybe. back the memories. What about uh, the shape that you put out there and the, the squad itself? Is that the squad now that we're looking for, John, or is it is it still mishmash? No, I mean we still feel. I mean, there's we, obviously Tony, uh, Colin, Tony's, and all them are Tony still Scully, out. Tony yeah, yeah, Tony Scully, Colin, all sides. Um, and uh, it Kevin a Austin. Side today, didn't well, it? we did. I mean, we've been working on the back four, you know, playing higher up the park, and uh, that was good. And we caught them offside quite a few times. Um, so th that's getting a little bit better. Um, but we still, we certainly still need some more experience. You know, we feel we need some ex more experience up front, and uh, maybe another one in the defence as well. So uh, we are hunting high and low for that. Uh, hopefully, by the time we get those players in. Uh, Tony Scully, Colin Allside and Kevin Austin will be back in the fold so we'll be really strong and it'd be nice if we can finish off the, you know, the last quarter of the season really strong and we can really see you know, whether we are good enough to push for anything next year. Oh, yeah. Well, um, it was nice to see Phil. I mean, Phil was struggling Tuesday night, weren't he? Phil Warner. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, he was just getting back in. That's he right. seemed to do a lot better today. He seemed yeah. to be a lot more with it today. Yeah, that's and, right. And uh, Warren, Warren, I thought, had a good game and all today, considering yeah. what he's, you know, yeah, what he's well, had with the first two Warren's games. Still, Warren's still not right, you know, no, at the moment. Mate. And he needs to be a, a yard quicker and yeah. he needs to be a bit stronger. And we'll, but we'll get him. But you know, yeah. I saw. Well, yeah. I kept an eye on him because I was trying to good, save another 10 grand. Because I said we knocked 20 grand on mistakes. <laughs> OK, right, good. So, um, you know, I mean, we're not going to see the best of Warren till this time next year. You know, he's, he needs a good season with us, and uh, he, ha he has to adapt. You know, to second division pace. You know, and it's uh, sometimes the game goes on around him, and you think, "Come on, Warren, just move your legs." And uh, uh, but and after him, he didn't make a mistake today, no, right, yeah. although he nearly did on one back pass. That's and, right, yeah. Uh, but we, you know, he's learning quickly, and uh, that's what it's about. We're, we're trying to bring club that uh, are quick learners mm. and uh, are keen to do it. Mm. What about Alex? I mean, because that was a you know, that do you? Where you stick a player on as a sub, <laughs> and then go, but then sub. obviously Stev went off, so you had to adjust. Is that yeah. what it was about? Sub the sub, they call that. <laughs> Uh, no, it was uh, five minutes to go, and uh, you know we felt that we needed uh, a midfield player to play in that wide right role because they were coming at us in yeah. droves. And uh, midfield players have you know, their defensive duties, and uh, and Alex Ravel can play wide right, but really is a striker. Yeah. So we felt you know just to readjust, that it would be uh, more team compact for us to bring uh, Luke Guthridge on. Right. Okay. Now, uh, finally, then. Um Forgot what I was going to say there, but it was important, John. Right, good. it was important. It must have been important. <laughs> it was important. It was. Um, we said about Tony Scott, Colin. Allen. It was just someone else I just thought of. Oh, yeah, Terry. Terry. Yeah, Fleming. yeah, Terry. I mean, yeah, Terry. Yeah. Because well, 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 it, it was, I was surprised. I was surprised to see Terry on the bench. Right. All right. Um, okay. It's no sort of after effects from the other day, is it? No. no, no. I mean, we, we just felt that we wanted to bring back Paul Wanless, you know, into midfield, and obviously, obviously, one of the three um, has to step out of midfield. Right. And Terry was one of those 
three in midfield and uh, we brought Paul back and uh, unfortunately it was Terry this time it, you know it may be someone else next time and Terry's so we've got uh, a rotation system well we? I don't know about that you know we <laughs> haven't really got the strength in pit for that but uh, you know, we're, we're starting to have that uh, possibility nice that you know to have, to where I can, you know, I can make like changes. That, you know, right. and people that are playing in the team have got to realise they've got to play to a certain level, and if they don't, they fall below the level. Then, you know, they will be rested. Right. And I don't consider it's been dropped. You know, I, I think it's rested and yep. uh, ready to come back. You know, when they're called upon again, it's like being in the army. They've got to be ready to be called up. That's right, for definite. So uh, we're all right for no, nothing serious today uh, from the lads today. It looks all right for Friday. Well, I mean, it's, uh, it's a tough game for us uh, uh, up at Port Vale and we'll, we'll have to be at our very best and uh, hopefully all the, all the injuries get a little bit closer and all the lads that play today you know, recuperate and uh, we're ready to go against Port Vale. So uh, Cardiff and QPR, which so far, I mean, they're, they're, you know, they're two of the biggest teams in, the squad, in, in this league right. and we've, we've, we've outplayed both. Really? Well, that's good. I mean, you I'm, know, I'm pleased, stuff, and I'm, really. I'm pleased that uh, you know you've seen that, mm. and uh, the support have seen that because uh, you know we have got a young, inexperienced squad, and they're they're learning how to win, and, and they've learned a number of lessons today, and hopefully that will continue. And the learning process will speed up so that you know we can win more continually. But I still think you know we, we you know we're not good enough yet. You know no. to it's to sort of to, to say that you know okay we're going to be all right now. You know we've got to find players, and these players have got to learn how to win. Definitely. Well, congratulations today, John. Cheers, mate. Well, you know, well earned three points. Thank you. And we'll be there at Friday, Port Vale. Okay, Spot on. Best. All right, cheers. cheers. Okay, well, a storming finish to the programme. QPR 1, Cambridge United 2. Kits with a su uh, superb one. And Youngs comes through again for his second goal of the season, which is absolutely great stuff for all of us. So, hope you've enjoyed this week's programme. We'll be back again next Monday, 530 ish okay around there and if you miss it then then it's on the loop as normal and uh, we look forward to seeing you here at the abbey next week amber and black take care Stay tuned, Bummer and Black. <laughs> <laughs>